So after watching this video lecture, students are going to be able to understand the definition of a common ion. Uh, you're going to be able to discuss how the addition of a common ion will affect equilibrium position, concentrations of hydroxides or hydronium ions, and of course the pH and pOH of solutions. And lastly, you guys will be able to actually calculate the hydroxide and hydronium concentrations or the pH and pOH of solutions where common ions have been added. So let's go ahead and look at what a common ion is and the common ion effect. Okay, so we're going to start out by first looking at this system here. Okay, so we are looking here at the ionization of hydrofluoric acid into H plus and F minus ions. So this occurs in solutions. Now, if we go ahead and write the equilibrium expression for this process, we get the following relationship. If I have a container that has hydrofluoric acid in water, I'm going to have the presence of H plus, F minus, and of course HF, as is expressed by the equilibrium expression seen here. So if I go ahead and I add a ion that shows up in uh, the equilibrium expression to the solution containing HF, I'm going to be adding what's known as a common ion. Okay, so the common ion that I could add here that would, you know, be easy to, to analyze would be F minus. Now, how could I add F minus to this solution here? Well, if I take a salt such as sodium fluoride, okay, and I drop it into that container, uh, what will end up happening is it's going to break up into its ions, okay, as we see here. Okay, so in this case, by adding sodium fluoride into the container that has HF, I will be adding F minus, and F minus is my common ion. Okay, so the addition of F minus to this solution is going to cause an equilibrium shift because we know that F minus shows up in my equilibrium expression, and because it shows up in the equilibrium expression, changing this concentration will cause a shift. And we know, according to Le Chatelier's principle, um, it's going to cause a shift to the left. Why? Because we have to reestablish equilibrium. Okay, so basically in this context, the addition of F minus is actually going to cause um, the ionization of HF to decrease. So basically the ability for HF to break apart into its uh, various ionic species is going to be dissipated through the addition of this common ion. And this is what we see with the common ion effect. Basically, if we add a common ion, it's going to suppress the ionization of weak acids or weak bases. Um, and so in turn, if it suppresses the ionization of a weak acid, the solution will be less acidic. If it suppresses the ionization of a weak base, that solution will become less basic. Okay, so basically um, the common ion effect is basically the addition of an ion that shows up in the equilibrium expression, um, and basically that causes a shift uh, back towards uh, reactants and subsequently decreases the acidity and basicity of the solutions respectively. So let's go ahead and look at this from another perspective. So let's go ahead and let's discuss the common ion effect with this example here. Okay, so in this case we have NH3. NH3 is a weak base. We know that if we put it in solution, it's going to produce a conjugate acid, NH4+, and hydroxide. Now this ionization process is going to be altered if we add um, a substance that shows up in the equilibrium expression. And so this is the KB expression, or the equilibrium expression, for this ionization process that we see here for NH3. Okay, and notice ammonium is one of those um, species that show up in the equilibrium expression. Okay, so changing the concentration here um, will obviously cause an adjustment to our equilibrium position. Okay, so by adding ammonium chloride, I am producing or I'm adding to solution NH4 plus and Cl minus. Now, Cl minus doesn't show up in the equilibrium expression, so it'll have no effect on um, the ionization process seen here, um, but NH4 does. Okay, so by adding more NH4, by adding this salt here, uh, we end up adding more of this product, which is going to cause equilibrium to shift to the left, and subsequently the production of hydroxide is going to decrease. If we decrease the amount of hydroxide, that subsequently makes the solution less basic or more acidic. Okay, so once again, common ion is going to be present. Um, if it's going to be present and, and cause a shift, you're going to see a decrease in your um, acidity or basicity, depending on what type of ionization process you're looking at. Let's go ahead and apply this uh, common ion effect to a calculation. So here they want us to calculate the um, H plus 
concentration as well as the percent ionization of a solution containing 1.0 molar HF and 1.0 molar sodium fluoride. Okay, so guys, in this context, we are looking at the behavior of our HF, and we are adding sodium fluoride. It's going to be a common ion uh, found in the ionization products of HF. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, of course, um, is take our HF and show um, our ionization products. So H plus and F minus. Okay, now. If this was just a regular uh, concentration uh, or pH calculation problem uh, for just HF, obviously we would just have 1.0 molar HF um, and of course 0 H plus. But in this context, I want you guys to notice that we also start with the presence of sodium fluoride. Okay, and so sodium fluoride, we know that it is a salt. So when we place it in water, it's going to ionize into these species. Okay, and so in this container straight off the bat we have fluoride present okay and we know the concentration of it now obviously i could give you that in moles and i could tell you the volume of your solution that you're dealing with and you would need to calculate that okay so once we've established our initial values okay we can continue through this problem uh, like a normal ice problem um, and set up uh, our equilibrium expression in the generic way okay so um, now that we have um, our equilibrium values, we know that our equilibrium expression for this process, um, or our Ka, is going to be equal to um, the following. Okay, so now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and plug our equilibrium concentration values uh, from our ice table into our equilibrium expression. All right, so um, Ka is going to be equal to um, x times 1.0 minus, or sorry, plus x, uh, all over 1.0 minus x. Okay, and then this is going to all equal 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4. So like we've done with other equilibrium problems, uh, when our k values are small, uh, we're going to go ahead and ignore uh, x. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're actually going to ignore x um, for both the top and the bottom. Okay, um, so what we end up here with here is 1 times 1.0, or 1.0, is equal to our 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4. Okay, uh, 1 divided by 1, those are going to cancel each other, um, obviously. So our x value is equal to 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4. Um, we then want to, of course, um, determine whether our drop was acceptable, which in this case is also going to provide us with our percent ionization. Okay, so... Um, at this point, we have solved for x, which corresponds to our H+, plus. so this would be H+, plus. Um, and as long as our percent ionization uh, is appropriate, um, we will be able to keep this with the assumptions we've made above. So percent ionization, okay, we're going to do 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4, divided by 1.0, um, all times 100, okay, and that's going to give us uh, a very small percentage um, and of course we would need to check it for um, our F minus as well um, and our F minus is absolutely fine uh, because it's the same value here okay so we've calculated both our H plus um, and our percent ionization um, and these are the values that we've received okay now very quickly guys I want to compare uh, what we just calculated here um, to what our problem would have looked like if we would have calculated um, the percent ionization and um, uh, H plus concentration uh, for HF without the presence of our common ion. Okay, so if we go ahead and we, uh, we look at this really quickly, okay, um, we would end up with a Ka value equal to x squared over 1.0 minus x. Okay, we're going to drop x, so our Ka is going to equal x squared over 1.0, which is going to be equal to um, 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, um, obviously 1 times 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth is 7.2, so x squared is equal to 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. Take the square root of both sides. x is going to equal 0 0.0268. Okay. 
Um, so if we go ahead and obviously check that versus um, our original concentration, uh, that's going to give us our percent ionization. So percent ionization is going to be 0 0.068 divided by 1 times 100. That's going to give us 2.68%. Okay, so this is the concentration of H+, plus. this is the percent ionization. Notice these two values are larger than the ones that we see over here when there's a common ion present. Okay, so we see both mathematically um, the process without a common ion and with a common ion. And we see that the common ion causes shift away from ionization, which is why we see a lower ionization value here when the common ion is present.